So in our last video, we looked at creating a three-dimensional cue and applying cross contour lines to the surface. Going to go on to another simple form, and that is going to be the cylinder. I like to move from cube to cylinder because the cylinder has two flat sides, top and bottom, or left to right if it's laying down, and it has a wrapped around rounded side, but the very outer edges of it are vertical. So we're still working with some vertical lines. Now we're going to start looking at how to make a three-dimensional looking rounded form with these flat sides. So it's going to up the difficulty level of drawing a three-dimensional object, in this case going from a cube with all six flat sides to a cylinder with two flat sides and a wrapped around roundness to it. So if you have room on your first sheet of sketchbook paper, you can still use it. I'm just going to move on to a new one. And again, the photograph I provided to you, the cylinder looks something like this in position. So some things I want to point out is, number one, you have a rounded top. It's like an oval. It's not perfectly circular. If I had it standing like this, and that would be a circle but with one edge again coming towards us it's called foreshortening and the other edge in this case the one back away furthest from me this causes the look of a of a oval at the top so that's how you start a cylinder for the sides we are again going to use vertical lines for this practice though in reality at the camera angle point they do have a slight slant to them because that is part of perspective but for now for simplicity we're going to just make these vertical and then notice the bottom is rounded it has a curve to it this is what helps give roundness to the object so the oval at the top with this rounded edge and what we can't see the oval at the bottom other than this edge closest to us it appears to be a rounded line. That is what gives our cylinder its rounded form. So once again, I'm going to set this back in front of me. You should reference the image that I have uploaded to your assignment. And I am going to again, lightly sketch out the oval I see at the top of my cylinder. And when I do this, this is why I sketch because I make several line movements until I start darkening up an area that I like the look of for that top of the cylinder. Once I have that, then about where I feel my outer edges of the cylinder are, I'm going to start dropping down my vertical for the height of my cylinder. And again, these are going to be vertical and we're going to try to keep them as parallel to each other as possible. And once I have that, then I want to make a rounded bottom. And if you've had me for art class before, in which we learned how to do these simple shapes in seventh grade, then you know that the rule is you want to round over this bottom, maybe a little bit more than what you think. What you don't want is a straight line across because that destroys the illusion of the three-dimensional form of a cylinder. So if I just put a straight line there, it looks rounded at the top, but it looks just like a rectangle at the bottom. So you need that rounded over bottom to create that contour outline form of a cylinder. And again, once I have that, then I can come in and I can start darkening my outline of the object. Sometimes what helps is when you do this top curve, the one that's heading towards the bottom of the object, is if you turn your paper upside down, that sometimes helps you. And that's just because your wrist does have a little bit more of a natural curvy movement in this direction than trying to go in this direction. Okay, 
So that sometimes helps with the form. I even sometimes turn it sideways and sketch out the shape I want. And we just want it to be fairly close to being an oval form. And then of course I'm going to darken in my vertical on the left and right. And once again, round over the bottom of my object. So I have the contour outline of my cylinder. I now want to put the cross contour lines in. Now when I did the tape here to show the verticalness of my flats, of my rounded wrapped around side, at the top those pieces of tape naturally cross over each other. I don't have to use this type of contour line at the top of this. I just need to show that this is a flat side. So I'm going to start with it with just some straight lines. And those straight lines, since I have verticals on the side, I'm going to stay away from verticals in here because then it's going to make it look like it's open and that we can see down into the cylinder, whereas right now I'm concentrating on a solid cylinder. So I am going to either come across horizontally or slightly diagonally. And I'm going to go ahead and go slightly diagonally for now. And again, I'm going to try to keep these lines parallel to each other. The goal is to just illustrate that if I took my finger and started here and came across, it's going to go in a straight movement because that's a flat side. Now, to represent this roundness, it's still going to be flat. I can come in for cross contour and just create kind of a bullseye effect to represent that round outer edge. Or I can come in with another diagonal for flatness. Or I can, as I did here, when my vertical lines go in for this side, I can just bring them up and wrap them around the cone and create this overlapped image. So I can do lots of things. The whole purpose here is to show that right now, we're not worried about the wrapping this way. Right now that this is a vertical side, so I'm just going to see what it looks like if I took my diagonal lines where they touch the oval and start dropping down verticals here. That works fairly well. I have one over here. Then I have a big gap. So I'm going to notice how when I did that, they're wider here towards the front, get closer together as they go back. So I'm going to mimic that. And again, I'm trying to keep them as parallel to each other as possible. Let them get closer together. And then where these ones touch up here, I'm going to go ahead and bring back some diagonals. And again, try to keep those parallel to each other. So there's a cross contour top, straight lines. It's going to read as flat. I have vertical lines, so I get the height of the vertical edges of my cylinder and now I need to show this roundness that wraps around here and you can see here looking at the tape it has the same curve as that bottom edge of the cylinder and the top edge of the cylinder so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to start along the side I'm going to let this drop down lower in the middle come up a little bit higher on the ends and again, that might be an easier curve to do with your paper slightly turned. 
and I'm going to do that all the way down the body of my cylinder to show the roundness. Now when it's turned like that it can get a little distorted so make sure you do place it back upright. Take a look at it. I think it's looking fine so far. So I'm going to continue to show the roundness of the side of the cylinder by wrapping these cross contour lines around it. So with those lines added, I've now helped show the form of my cylinder, the tall vertical sides that if I run my finger from top to bottom, even though I can slightly feel the roundness this way, I'm mainly feeling just the flatness of it in this direction. And the roundness here. If I run my finger around here, I can feel that curve and I represent that with a curved line. So that is the cylinder that you want to complete.